This week, one of the things that was posted online was a um, theologian and an acquaintance of mine, Fleming Rutledge, a great, uh, great theologian of the crucifixion and resurrection, uh, posted a piece from Pope Francis, and this is what he said. The storm exposes our vulnerability and uncovers those false and superfluous certainties around which we have constructed our daily schedules our projects, our habits, and priorities. It shows us how we have allowed uh, to become, uh, how we have allowed to become dull and feeble, the very things that nourish and sustain and strengthen our lives and our communities. The tempest lays bare all our prepackaged ideas uh, and forgetfulness of what nourishes our people's souls, all those attempts that anesthetize us with ways of thinking and acting that supposedly save us, but instead prove incapable of putting us in touch with our roots and keeping alive the memory of those who have gone before us. We deprive ourselves of the antibodies, he says, we need to confront this adversity. Um, this uh, uh, time in which we are living uh, over the last uh, now some seven weeks for many of us, a shorter time for some, longer for others, uh, is uh, a time in which we have uh, begun uh, to uh, reach that moment, a time when we've reached that moment of asking uh, about the faith that is in us. So over the last couple of weeks, we've talked about hope. Today, I want to invite you to consider the faith uh, that is in us and to be able not simply to bear witness to that faith but be able to articulate it well for the loss of uh, so much of our normal lives and what we thought would be uh, in this moment has brought us to a place where we need a deep and abiding faith something much greater than what perhaps we have had uh, that has brought us to this uh, point uh, thus, thus far. Now, let me say I do have faith uh, in uh, a number of things uh, about life and the world, uh, but these things are so easily questioned uh, in uh, the moment uh, by pundits and those with opinions by differing uh, ideas of the ways in which we are to uh, be with one another, the different forms uh, and practices of cleanliness and things like that. And so we are bombarded with things uh, that whittle away at the fragility that we already uh, experience uh, in, in our faith. Uh, the theologian and Episcopal priest Marilyn McCord Adams has a wonderful piece on YouTube where she talks about how we enter this moment, we begin to ask ourselves this question about how can God allow this to happen? How can uh, this global pandemic uh, be occurring? And certainly there are many opinions uh, about that. I find them all lacking, in fact, uh, uh, that I don't think that's the right way. I agree with Adams on this. I don't actually think there's the right question uh, to ask. Instead, the question to ask is in the midst of our pain and our suffering, in the midst of this virus, uh, how will God, who is great and good, uh, bring light and life and goodness out of it? Uh, and that is a very different question. It's a very uh, different beginning point. And we saw already uh, in the Pope's uh, reflections on this, one of the key ingredients to understanding what our faith, uh, how our faith uh, rests in a different narrative um, than uh, the one of the world, uh, than even the one that believes uh, in a God where we can trade goodness uh, for good things. Uh, this is a different kind of faith. This is a faith that begins with understanding that God created the world, that God is present in the world, that God has always been present in the world, that it is God's narrative that we live in, God's story that we are living in. It is a, a, a faith that understands that God walks with us using that image uh, from the Old Testament and the book of Genesis, but God who is present in the lives 
uh, of God's people and generations, generations of faith ancestors who've come before us and who have told us, told us that this God that we believe in is a God who does great work, who heals the sick, who gives sight to the blind, who frees the slave and those who are bound and who does mighty works. The God in the midst of great tragedy and the great uh, darkness of life, that God brings light and deliverance. This is the God that is testified to in God's narrative. This is the great God of the creation who is present with us at all times. And, and then the second piece of our kind of uh, uh, faithful, uh, the pillars of our faith rest in the understanding that Adam says, Adam says that God doesn't uh, ask us or invite us to do anything that God hasn't already experienced. And in this, we know that God goes far beyond simply walking with us uh, in this world, but instead that God uh, has been present, that God came in the person of Jesus Christ and experienced life lived as we live it and suffered uh, as we suffer, that uh, even in the midst of, uh, as we approach that this moment of Palm Sunday and Holy Week, we're put into the mind of God's uh, suffering, that in uh, this part of the narrative, what we know, what we know is that God experiences pain, uh, suffering, uh, even to death. And in that moment, one of Jesus' last words on the cross, in that moment, even he asks the question that we ask, where is God? And this, this is how deep and powerful uh, Jesus' uh, uh, suffering uh, goes. And even he feels uh, that darkness is all around him. Uh, and he wishes that it wasn't this way and that the cup would pass that prayer from the garden and then uh, the, the moment on the cross where uh, literally asking uh, for uh, God to, uh, uh, to be present. Uh, and this, this tells us then that God not only uh, is present with us, but God actually experiences our cross and suffering in a very real and powerful way. And this is how so many Christians in poverty and war and civil war and famine uh, over the centuries uh, have, have understood uh, that God is actually present with us at the foot of the cross uh, as we go through our suffering, having gone through God's own. Therefore, the pandemic, uh, the suffering, the civil war, whatever the cause might be at the moment, suffered over generations, that this itself, this itself was our cross and our suffering in that moment and that Christ uh, was there with us. Adam says we need to really hearken back at moments like this to the great medieval theologians like Anselm, who uh, proclaimed a God, the greater God of goodness. So great is this God's goodness that we can't even imagine. It's a, a greater than we could even imagine. This is the God we believe in. And so it is this God that not only is present with us and experiences life and suffering and death with us, but it is this God that intends goodness to come out of it. And as that great medieval Saint, uh, Saint Julian said, uh, all will be well uh, and uh, in the end, and if it is not well now, then it's not the end. That God will have the last word, and God is not only deeply present with us and experienced this, uh, so God knows our suffering, and is at our cross, but God will bring good out of it. And then lastly, our faith is that faith in uh, God of the comforting spirit, the Holy Spirit who broods uh, over creation that gathers uh, God's people in that spirit of wisdom and grace. And here we find faith that the doctors and the nurses and the scientists will find vaccine because of God's wisdom given to them, that God uh, will bring about an end to this suffering by a vaccine, that our immune systems will uh, conquer this, that our, at the end of the day, uh, even uh, we will find therapeutics to help manage the pain in the midst of this, that God's wisdom uh, is in the world and bringing comfort 
to the world, not just a, a comfort of the encourager, which indeed it is for us as Christians to encourage one another through the power of the Holy Spirit, but a comforting spirit that itself is even now moving the world as it groans uh, in, in this, uh, in this uh, moment. And so I want to bring us then to a close on this meditation of what are the pillars of our faith? Where does our faith in the great tempest come from? It comes from God, from Christ Jesus and the Spirit. And I want to encourage you to have faith in uh, this God that generations have testified uh, to, uh, the, to have faith in a God that walks with us and has suffered uh, before us, a God who has healed the uh, the blind and the lame and raises the dead over and over again in God's narrative, uh, a God who uh, will have the last word and whose goodness uh, is uh, greater uh, than the fear of the darkness and anxiety that even now we experience. And so an opportunity for us to take the faith in those things that too easily fail us a faith in this world, a faith in the things of this world, in the routine of this world, in the structures of this world, and set those aside and deepen our faith in a living God uh, who has been present since the very beginning of the cosmos and is present with us even to the end of ages. Blessing of God uh, keep you. Uh, the blessing of God sustain you in this hour. The blessing of God come to you in the midst of darkness. And the blessing of God give you light and life and a sense of hope. And a sense that this is even now passing away as God is at work in the world with us. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.